Well, would you look at us? How about that? Yes. We showed up. It's been a year, a long year, a terrible year, a threatening year, a dangerous year, a year of great caution. And we showed up. And we're going to keep showing up. And we're going to work out the kinks, like announcing page numbers. I realize nobody had a page number because we didn't print a bulletin, because we can't hand out bulletins. We can't give you something, except communion, which you're going to get. So today, we begin anew. And what an appropriate day it is to begin anew. It is the day of the resurrection. In Mark's gospel, which occurs in this lectionary year, every three years, we read the Easter Day account of finding the empty tomb in Mark's gospel. If you were to take this gospel to court as a testimony to the resurrected Jesus, it might not pass muster because there's no Jesus. He's gone. When you get home, open up your Bibles and look at this account from Mark's Gospel. And those first eight verses of the last chapter of Mark don't have a resurrection appearance. They simply have the women taking spices to the tomb and discovering stone rolled away and inside the tomb an angel who explains to them that he's risen. And they left in terror and amazement. In terror and amazement. And scholars have spent a lot of time and ink working on why did Mark just put that in and not go on about it? Well, we can't get into the mind of Mark, but we can get in to the effect of what Mark wrote on the church this first gospel. He provided the basis for the other four gospels to be written to add in the details. He provided the basis for the Christian faith to become a real faith. Not just a, well, it happened this way and this way and this way and therefore believe. It happened. Now believe. When I was growing up, I mentioned uh, in one of the sermons that you probably didn't hear in the last several days, I mentioned in the sermon that I grew up in a little town in Virginia, Bluefield, in St. Mary's Episcopal Church. And behind the altar, this glorious window, somebody must have had a lot of money when they built this church in the early 1900s, a glorious window of the scene of the women in the tomb and the angel talking to them and telling them he's gone, he's risen. It was the very scene from Mark's gospel. And in the window, there are lilies. You can see crosses in the background. No Jesus. The church I grew up in believed in the resurrection, even though there wasn't a Jesus in the window. They established that church starting out first meeting led by a deaconess in those days sent into the wilds of Virginia to find people to convert them to Christianity and to form Episcopal churches all through the countryside. Her work was effective. And St. Mary's was born, a little stone church. And 50 years later, my parents had my brother and I, my sister, and we were brought into that church and given the faith, even though there was no Jesus in the window. 
You see, there's more to this story, isn't there? And you, my dear friends, even though you may go from week to week without uttering the word resurrection, you may go from year to year, from career to career, from school to school, all through your regular life, and never say the word resurrection. But look at you. You live it. We don't need any better evidence than the fact that this generation has received the Word of God and news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how I got it. From folks who believe. That's what I hope to impart to you on this day if you are new to this faith. You can get it. It's there for you, done for you, available to you. And this parish, right now, gathered here on the wet grass slope in front of a building that was built some 20 years ago, is evidence that resurrection belongs to us. It didn't just start here, though. This is a new start. This parish started with a group of folks who really just wanted the convenience of a parish in Douglas County. They were tired of driving to Austell. Nobody wanted to go to Austell. So they asked the bishop, and the bishop said, yeah, it's fine. Go out there and see what you can do. And they did. They met in the funeral home. No chairs in the grass. A funeral home for several years. Then they moved to some kind of a recreation center. I'm not sure what it was, and it burned down. They lost everything except the Bible that they used in the church. That's this parish. That's you. That believes in resurrection. Because that's who we are. We are resurrection people. So we've been through something. The worst pandemic in generations. And we're going to get through it step by step. And we're going to be church. And next week, we're going to remember to announce page numbers. And next week, we might be inside. We're going to do some variations on what we've got before us. Because we believe in resurrection, even though you may not say the word resurrection between now and next Sunday. I'm going to bet that you're going to live it. Because you're evidence of it right now. I don't know what better sermon there is than you. Sitting here, putting up with this in the hope that you get to see one another, support one another, pray for one another, lift up one another, and proclaim again that Christ is risen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Amen. Give them just a minute.